Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video we're going to be finally tackling something that I've been excited about since we started doing these. And that is this, or one of the planes. So this is a Stanley number no. 4. And uh, it belonged to my great grandfather. As you can see it's pretty rusted up but yeah should be fun I've never done one I've only I did this little one and that was fairly straightforward didn't film that one but that was kind of practice for this one but yeah that's today's video I hope you enjoy and uh, let's see what we can do with this thing first job is going to be to de-rust it so before I do any flatting, because I'm going to have to reflat the sole and all of that, but before I do any of that, it's going to be take the rust off as best as I can of every part and then sort of put it back together. So let's get to it. de-rust this thing. This is always my favourite part when you first get to see what's lurking under all the rubbish.
So there we go, that's the initial sort of clean up phase done. This was just, you know, removing all of the rust and the crap. And all I used was the bench wheel and the little Dremel to get into the small bits. But yeah, it's come up really well. Obviously we're gonna take it quite a lot further. But this just give us this just gives us kind of a, a clean base to work from now so that we can see what we're getting into. And it's not too bad. So yeah, there we go. I've not touched the wood yet. Uh, these two pieces. They're gonna need their own special treatment. But I think step number one, so what I'm going to do, um, these side parts here, they just need to be, you know, flat enough. They don't need to be perfect, but obviously the sole, that is going to need flat enough. So it does have some corrosion and stuff. I'm not sure how bad it's going to be, probably not too bad. But I'll just be running this on some abrasive paper shortly to uh, get that nice and flat and smooth. And then I'm going to uh, repaint the inside, all of the inside of this part. Uh, this will be painted back black. Uh, it should look quite nice. But the main purpose of doing this, obviously, although it's going to look nice, you see how these little pieces of brass have come out. They were just buried under decades of crap. But yeah, the main purpose of cleaning it up to this level is because all of these little things have threads in them. They were all caked. And the various parts of the plane, so like the iron, for example, needs to be able to move up and down with the adjustment screw and it tilts. So it needs to be able to work smoothly and it can't do that if it's all dirty because I do intend on using this so you know I want it to not only look nice but it needs to perform as well so I think by the time we've finished it it will be a lovely tool to use on to the next step which I think is going to be flattening out this thing and getting that ready so to do that I've got a tile here or a piece of a tile now I've checked this with the straight edge and this is as flat as I can get so it's very important obviously that it is on a flat surface otherwise you're going to have a wonky sole. So all I'm going to do is get a bit of abrasive paper this is just 120 grit to do the initial sanding Stick that on there. The clamps. Oh, they're not going to work. So that is as flat as I can get. I'm just going to. not bad. In fact it's pretty good to be honest. <laughs> it's not going to need much. So I'm not pressing too hard on this. Just keeping like an even pressure on the whole thing. What I'm going to do though is just raise up the sides of it now. 
just ever so slightly with a ruler like this and that will just kick that edge up so we're going to put a little bit of a sand on this side here so I'm learning as I go but apparently that helps the plane glide a bit better attacking that edge. Just do a little bit more. Same with this side. And there we go. I'd say that's pretty much ready to go. However, we're going to go a bit further with it because I want it to be lovely and smooth so we're going to get some 600 paper and do the same thing and that should take it to a really nice smoothness and this is just going to polish it now that was the same thing the black coming off in the water that means we're taking metal off I'm going to run this on the polisher as well so it looks a lot better you can already see the shine coming in that that is dead flat <laughs> obviously it was well maintained when it was in use however many years ago probably 50 or 60 maybe more 70 years ago That is very, very smooth now. Very smooth. I'm going to do the same with the sides now. Just for aesthetic appearance really, more than anything. I'm just going to send them down. Okay, so that is cleaned up really nice. You see this pitting here? So this is dead flat now. That pitting's going inwards. So there's not much I can do about that. Aside from filling it. But as long as it's smooth, which it is, it's not protruding this way. Uh, it should operate just fine. I'm just going to give these contact points here a quick hit as well. Uh, these parts because that is where the frog sits onto under here you see and that goes onto there like that so we want to make sure that these are flat and smooth which they're not they've got a bit of corrosion on them so I'm just going to hit them up not too aggressively because I don't want to take away the flatness just to remove the rubbish basically I'll probably call that done. So I don't want to go too far with these because I don't want to risk making it uneven. Same with the side bits. Get into them. These are all going to have oil on them anyway so they're not going to go rusty again. 
as long as I maintain it. Okay, don't need to do that bit because that's just the handle. It still looks a little dirty, but I have cleaned this as best as I can. Um, this is just the, the stain in the paint. There is a little bit of rust left, if you can see. But I'm going to be using a paint called POR15, which uh, paints over rust, basically. So it will seal all that in and neutralise it anyway. It should last a long time and look a lot better. <laughs> I'm going to actually paint this part now because obviously it's going to take a while to dry. So this is the paint, fantastic stuff this is. Uh, definitely don't want to get it on your skin, <laughs> that's for sure. That was ridiculous. <laughs> we got there in the end. Alright, let's get some paint on this thing. It's really thin paint this is. And again, do not get this on yourself or anything you don't want black. That looks amazing. So this is a one coat job. You can't overcoat this stuff. So you can get it right first time. I'm going to paint up the side of the wings because they're hard to access to polish and clean. So we're not getting this on any of those shined parts because they're going to be metal to metal contact. So we want them to be crisp but we can go in between them. Right so we are coming up towards the next phase of this now. So all of the parts that needed painting or I've polished they're now set to the side I mean that just looks so much better <laughs> very happy with that I painted the frog as well so all of that stuff's to the side now because we don't need to worry about that so these are the remaining parts that we need to work on we've got the plain iron itself obviously this is going to need sharpening quite a lot because it's a bit, a bit knackered on the rusty edge. We've got the cap iron, that will need a little bit of work just to true off there. We'll leave them to the side for a minute because I think I'm going to start on the wood. Now the first job with this, because there's going to be some gorgeous wood hiding underneath this. The handle's got a little bit of damage but I think we can repair that. Um, but yeah, the first job is going to be to just scrape off all of this grime and the old varnish or whatever it is that's on here. And this should just come off. Yeah, it is. That's coming off pretty nice. So I'm just using a... Uh, a layout knife, just a, you know, one that I made. I'm just going to scrape all of this off. It's probably going to take a little bit, but I need to do this before we can sand it, otherwise it won't sand properly. So, yeah, I'm going to check back <laughs> once this is done because this is probably going to take me a little bit. Okay, so I've got most of the crap off with the knife. I'm just throwing this little jig thing together here. Just so that I can now chuck this into the drill press. I'm going to give it a bit of sand. I'm not going to be able to do this with the handle, but I might as well speed this one up a little bit. It's all about working smart. So, there we go. Right. So, I'm just going to go at this initially with uh, some 120, see where we can get to, just to get it back down to bare wood, and then go from there.
damage there. It is a dark wood. So. Perfect. When I oil this now, it will be very nice. In fact, I might oil it while it's on there. that lovely rich color wow <laughs> that's really dark on the camera you just about see it happy got a bit of dust on there you see that let's focus you so you can <laughs> there we go it's not going to stay that shiny obviously once the oil soaks in but yeah i'm happy with that all right, onto the handle. So you can see on the top of this, we do already have a bit of a repair where it's obviously come off. So let's just take that out. If we can, clean it up. I am gonna have to put this back in, unfortunately. Really hard to get to this with the camera in the way. <laughs> okay. So I think what I may even do is just make a whole new top piece to be honest. Yeah, I think let's do that. So let's start by just got a really fine brass wire brush here just going to clean out the dirt that's collected in there same with this piece So how are we going to attack this? Just going to take off some little shavings. See in there? Just got this very fine set. So it's just grazing it. get this as straight as we can which is about there there we go that's pretty flat cool and the only hardwood I've got is this stuff so it's going to be a repeat of the saw where you're going to see my repair at the top 
but that's okay. Okay. So that right there. going to be our new handle. Hopefully. See what we can do. So I think the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to glue it and then put a couple of brass pins straight down into it because I need to be able to drill this rod to come up through the front there. So if I mark on the piece here where that is, now we've got loads of room. So we want to be somewhere past that area, probably around there. Okay. So these are the pins I'm going to sink into it. Probably not all the way. I'll cut them off. They're just going to give it a bit more to grab onto rather than just the glue. Because we don't want this coming off again. So about there, I'd say. We want a line. Yeah, I think that's the spot. And we're just going to go. So our centre point is about there. Let's go one, two. going to go with the 1.5 which means we are going to have to tap them in but that's okay all right nice slow speed on the drill in place. I'm going to use them to drill down just by hand. Set one of these pins in so it can't move and then drill the second hole. So that's that. And now I can drill them to depth properly.
do. Perfect. They will tap down into there. Right, so we are ready to marry these two parts together. Just going to use a bit of wood glue. Try and get some in these holes. Some in that hole to seal it up. In the crack. On the back side as well. Like that. And some in there. And then get some over. There we go. There we go. Right. Pin sticking out the bottom. I'm just gonna get them located there and hammer that home. It doesn't matter about those tops because I'm actually going to sand them off. Clamp it on the pins themselves. We're now ready with everything drying. We can start working on the iron and the cap iron. So this has got, if you can see it on that camera there, it's quite pitted on this side of the blade. This isn't too bad, it's also not square. So to do that, we're going to use one of these little angle guide things. I'm just going to have to eyeball it because I don't have a protractor. That's about where we need to be. Just need to tighten that off. So we're just going to start on the coarse paper. Just double check my edge. Yeah, that's right. Start on here because this will take off a lot of metal quickly. And we're just going to create a new edge. in the edge of the blade there so we've got to keep going with this All right, so now we're going to move on to the wet stones which I've had soaking in water for five ten minutes and just do this by hand now rather than using the guide because it gives us a rounder edge so I'm just going to start sort of feel where that angle is which is about there, you see the water. And we're just gonna go. Oh no, that's a problem. Drop it down a bit, get the back bevel. Roll it back. Got a nice burr on the back of it as well. That's dried out. Yeah, that is 
already very sharp. So we switch over to the next stone, which is thousand. Same again. Drop it down a bit. Tilt it to get the wings. so it doesn't put a divot in the middle. There we go, that is where we need to be. Don't really need to do the 8000, but we're going to, because why not? Place the back flat on there and see what happens. Make sure we're taking it evenly. Do just charge this wood up with polishing compound. I'm going to start on this side because that's what we were on. I'm just going to draw this over and this will give it a nice polish. piece of leather and then strap the front of the blade got some stuff on it and we're just gonna strap along that edge Now is our new 
cutting edge and that is very very sharp just to see where we're at there we go. and that is mega sharp compared to how it was before which you couldn't even cut anything yeah there we go so that's done now we need to move on to the cap iron so where are we at i've had to take a little break <laughs> it's too hot today um let's move them so off camera i just gave the surface of the plain iron a bit of a clean up just with some paper this is the crucial part this is the crucial part that needs to be flat so this bit i just sort of did it by hand not too aggressive just to get rid of the rest of the rust but this thing is now well it's ready to go so all we've got to do now is sort out this cap iron which doesn't really take a lot I can do that just on here it's just flatten off this part here which is probably pretty flat anyway I'm just going to lay it on the flat part um, with part of it on there as well just so this bit's touching and we're just going to see what it does yeah I mean that's fine anyway I'll just get that all it wants to be is even all the way across there we go see see how we've got shine all the way along there now so that's all it needs just so that it sits flush I'll probably um, just run that quickly on this foam just to smooth it there we go and the top is really good uh, or just going to polish it on the strop I think so let's just do that bottom bit So this isn't a blade, this doesn't need to be really sharp. I'm just going to strop this. Just so that it's nice and smooth. nice and smooth and that will now sit just on the where's my go slight gap like that and there's no there's no gap in between so shavings aren't going to go in and get jammed up inside there And then all I'm going to do is just uh, go over this with a bit of the sandpaper just to get rid of all the rubbish and make it look a bit nicer. And that's it pretty much. So I think that is now flat enough, nice and smooth so everything will sit on that nicely. I'm just going to give that bottom part a little pass. Just on the edge of the paper here. There we go. That's pretty good anyway, to be fair. And that is it. So, all we need to do now is shape this handle. It feels pretty good. I've just realised I was supposed to make this bit longer. It must have snapped off the... Uh, you know years ago but looking at my other plane let me see it has it extends out which I didn't realize so oh well <laughs> it should still be okay though you can see the difference here though crazy we come back to the start of this video and compare this plane to where we are now it's just, I will be restoring this one as well, of course. This one's fatter, obviously shorter, but it's fatter. I don't want to sit inside that. 
But yeah, so to the handle. Welcome to the wonder that is plan B. Piece of alley rod with a 4mm drill bit shoved in the end of it. Let's see. Runs pretty straight. Bit off centre, that's not great. Well, I'm going to bore this out anyway, so it's not the end of the world. So I managed to do it. I did this part off camera. See, I got a little bit of a blow out there, but it took me a good half an hour to do this just by hand with a carving knife. <laughs> However, our little nut thing sits in there just nice. So now it's going to get a little bit of stain on this and then linseed oil it and then we'll be ready for reassembly. So just going for the raw linseed oil again because I don't want to blow my garage up. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Wow, that actually blends pretty well. You can see the repair, but you know I like that, because it shows that that's when I took ownership of this particular tool. Just going to smear it in the oil, let it soak in for a little bit. Get underneath as well. And then we're going to be ready to reassemble. Right, folks, so we are ready to go for reassembly of this gorgeous piece of history. Just going to oil all of the contact points. This is now dry. 
all I've done extra is just shave off the top of these letters at the front here just so that you can read them and there was just literally a bit of folded over sandpaper and just took the paint off so let's start with getting these handles back on so the way we do that is I'm going to put a drop of oil on all of these threads just so that they stay good one in first that seats in there snugly like that perfect then I'm going to get the handle on the back need these two parts here drop a little bit of oil in there it's just to stop it from going bad again basically. Let's screw this back part in first. Slip the handle over. We've got a little screw at the front as well which is this rounded one. I can't believe this is the same tool that we started with yesterday. So I won't cinch it down yet. Get the top one first. A nice brass one. Like that. And tight. Oh, it's rock solid. Perfect. So this fork, this sits in here, and this is what controls the height of the uh, plane iron. So we've got a little pin. Drop that in the back there. Apologies, you don't have a close-up view. The uh, other camera's gone flat, and I want to get this wrapped up. But we're just putting this little piece in. So that just sits in there. Like that. Little pin. Drop that in. Okay, that's now seated in there. Bit of oil on that pin. And we're going to put some on this thread as well. So this is now going to marry up with this part. This is a reverse thread, so lefty tighty righty loosey on this one. Just tighten that up. That's going on there, lovely. Compared to how it was when we first took it apart, I could barely even turn that thing. So that's just going to need a couple of twists to uh, clear out those threads there we go okay so then this part is going to sit on here we're going to drop a bit of oil on these contact points I'll just spread that around my finger this is going to sit you can see just in there like that and we've got our two bolts with our washers and they're going to clamp that down Okay, and we want just a small gap so this can move this frog has adjustment on it so it can move back and forward and we just want a little gap at the front there a tiny little gap I'm going to get that lined up where it's meant to be and then close it down once it's square tighten that down so this frog doesn't have any kind of Sometimes they have an adjustment around here, and then you can do it, but this doesn't, so I'm just going to cinch this down so it's nice and solid. Right, now for the plain iron. So this bolt is just finger tight. We're going to screw it all the way in just so it lubricates properly, and then we're going to back it right off. Because that's going to need adjusting in a minute. Get our other components here. So this is the cutting iron. This is the cap iron. So what we're going to do? Get that on top. Flip it over. Put our little screw thing in there. Bring that over like that. 
and then pull this forward, the cap iron, to where we want it, which is very close to the edge. Just enough so there's a tiny little gap. And then we're going to tighten up this. Make sure we're lined up properly still. Just going to scoot that back a touch. Too much. There. And then lock this nut down with this bolt. Still square, and that's locked in. And then we're going to oil up the frog. So the face of this, as you can see, just going to get a layer of oil on there because the iron itself has to twist on that. God. So make sure that's nicely oiled up so this is the iron this actually twists on this to square itself that's how it works we need to put this little adjuster in first this is what does that movement so we get a dob of oil and just on that pin there and on this the end of this little bit So that's going to sit on there like that. That's our adjustment. See? I'm going to oil up that wheel just a little bit so that can move freely. And then we're going to drop a bit of dob of oil in the end of this. I'm not sure what this piece is called, I can't remember. But this locks it all together pretty much. So the iron, that then goes in like this. Probably going to need to back this nut off. Okay folks, I think the camera turned off towards the end of that. But I've got this set now. I had to adjust the frog a little bit to get it to sit right. But, there we go. Look at that. That is a lovely looking piece of equipment. more to the point does it work let's find out this is the first time I've tried this we're gonna do it together it's got a piece of pine in here rough I should have done it before and after really so if you don't know what a plane is I imagine there's some people on here that don't uh, you're about to find out so this isn't set yet so we're gonna get the blade down There we go, we're starting to get something. Got a little bit more. And there we go. <laughs> Look at this. Oh! <laughs> that is just. Look at that. Mega fine shavings, look. It's all ejecting as it should be. None of it's going up into the uh, cap iron. Oh, that's fantastic. And that is now <laughs> silky smooth surface. Let's see if we can tighten it down a touch more. This is a deeper cut now, and it's still <laughs> just cruising through. Oh my god, that's amazing! Look at that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is what a plane does. I don't know how old this plane is, I would assume. 
you know, it's at least 70 years old. It's got to be. Maybe more. Who knows? But now it's mine, my little repair. And uh, <laughs> that is a gorgeous, gorgeous tool. It really is. You can't beat these old tools. They're just things of beauty. Right. That's it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this sort of slightly different restoration video more of a follow along but uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to do more like this or continue with the silent ones right I'll see you all in the next one catch you in a bit mm -hmm.